So my name is Blake Crony. Uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, reinforcement learning and WPA and basically how it goes around a, a certain project that we're going to look at. So the first thing I want to start off with is just kind of a, a, a quick little quote. And this kind of reinforces what we're going to talk about, no pun intended. So life is all about choices. You know, you're always making choices. You do your best to try to make your best choice. Uh, sometimes you make wrong choices. And what we're going to look at here is we're going to try to figure out is through some uh, technology with machine learning, through leveraging different, uh, different uh, open source packages, how can we apply this to wireless and packet captures and also uh, mainly the WPA process? The handshake. So we look at a decision tree. How many of you have tried to sit there and figure out everything that you're going to do in one day? You wake up and you're like, okay, I have how many tasks that I need to do? How long is it going to take me to get this done? Do I even have enough time? You start going crazy because all of your information in your head is going through, it's going super fast, and you're like, what do I need to do? Who do I need to follow up with? How many, you know, how many cycles do I actually have when I'm trying to work through all this stuff? And machine learning and reinforcement learning, it's all about trying to figure out is, can we add some better inputs into this? So, reinforcement learning, another definition here real quick so that you understand what it is that we're talking about is, this is according to Wikipedia, so this is not my made up one, but uh, reinforcement learning is an area of machine learning where what we're trying to do is we leverage software agents and take actions in an environment and then try to maximize some kind of reward out of that, a cumulative reward to figure out, you know, if I make this choice, what's the result going to end up looking like? There's three different uh, machine learning algorithms out there, our learning paradigms, if you will. We've got this one, supervised and unsupervised learning. So we're going to focus on just the reinforced learning aspect of it here today. So within this reinforced learning, we are going to leverage what's called an A2C model. And the next few slides that we're going to look at, we're going to step through this process. An A2C model is about using these concepts of an actor advantage critic. And it's still based off of a policy gradient model, but we're trying to figure out what the benefit of A2C is that we can now leverage both the actions and the values. So we're going to map the states to both sides of it and hopefully get a better chance of capturing handshakes in our case of what we're going to look at. The whole goal here is try to maximize our reward as much as we possibly can when we're trying to go through these models. So again, I'm trying to do uh, reinforcement learning in 10 minutes just doesn't really work out all that well. So this is, there's a couple of links that I'll send you at the, the end of it that will have some really cool explanations of it um, with cartoon format as well, which uh, really plays through nicely in a story that even children can look at. So let's apply this to a simple concept of the four-way handshake. How many have ever tried to capture the four-way handshake before? Hopefully everybody that's gone through the CWSP process has tried to at least look at that process once. That's kind of a big component of it. And what are some of the issues that we run into when we're trying to capture this process? We need to trigger this event. You know, we know that if we have, I have Keith's pre-shared key for his network, it doesn't mean that I can just simply go and say, put that into Wireshark and decode his frames. I need to have that handshake, that exchange process of him where he's creating those transient keys. We don't want to share everything over clear text. RF is clear text. So we don't want to share that process. We need to have a little bit that one side has and somebody else has a little give and take on this. So how can we speed up this process to try to create the ability to capture frames efficiently and capture more of them? You know, the more handshakes that we get, the better that we have a chance at being able to deduce what that pre-shared key was by running them through things like Hashcat. The more data, always better. You know, that's the goal that we're trying to look at here. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at ways to try to leverage that reinforced learning and apply it to capturing the four-way handshake just focusing right now on the four-way handshake. You could certainly apply this towards every other element, every other frame that uh, goes across the wireless, but we're just simply looking at it right here to the four-way handshake on this. So when you apply that A2C model to this, what we're going to do is we're going to define the critic. And that critic is what do I think I can do? I bet you I can capture 20 handshakes today. I bet you I can just start off right now and say I will get 20 handshakes, and that's going to be my starting point. That's what my goal is. The actor then is, what are the channels that I'm going to scan on? So we typically look at it as we're going to scan channel 1, channel 6, channel 11. And we put some sort of weight to this. So here's where we start getting into that decision process that everything in life is about with the choices. We are going to make that choice of what channel do I want to scan on and which one do I think is going to give me the highest chance of capturing the four-way handshakes. And I'm not even looking at just from a specific client. I'm not trying to capture Jen. I'm not trying to capture yours right now. I'm just saying, out of this room, of the 300 some of us, 
how many can I capture right now? So I start off with that as my critic and I look for my actors here in terms of the channels that I'm gonna scan to. So then I go on my way and I make a decision and boom, I get some sort of reward. I'm rewarded for that result. I don't know if this is a good reward or a bad reward, I just get a reward. So in this case I captured five handshakes. So I record my results but I'm not gonna reflect on it quite yet. Well, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do this process again. So I repeat the process here by looking at it and saying, again, I'm gonna define that critic. Another scan of the channels. I'm at another inflection point of trying to make a decision of which ones do I scan at. So now I look at it and I say I have, again, channels one, six, and 11 that I'm gonna scan at, but they're all equally the same, I consider it. I think they all look the same. So I have a 33% chance of having some sort of reward that I received. So I'm just gonna pick one and it's gonna be a blind guess at this point. So that blind guess is gonna say I'm gonna choose channel 11. I've never been on channel 11 so maybe this is exploring new territory. I don't know what type of results I'm gonna get from it. So I'm rewarded once again for those results. Maybe it's really good. In this case I got 15 handshakes so I would consider that a pretty good reward. Still we look at the results but we don't reflect on it. We're not gonna reflect on it until we've had at least three results. Once we have three results, we step back and we reflect on it. This allows us to work off of what we would consider more of a human scaled timeline. Where instead of waiting until the end of the day to do my reflection, you know what do they always say about hindsight? Hindsight is 2020, it's perfect. We can reevaluate our lives and look at everything and be like, oh if I would have done this differently, I would have done this differently, I would have had different answers. But that requires you to go through those actions of life in order to come up with that 2020 reflection of it. So that's a Monte Carlo model where they look at it and they say, okay, we got a huge data set at the end of the day. It's taken a long period of time to collect this information and now we do our periodic re reflex. So we're gonna look at it shorter intervals that allows us to get higher potential rewards and it enables us to tune our inner critic. We all have that. You know, if I go and I say, what do you want for dinner tonight? Probably from my wife and kids, I'm gonna get, I don't care. I'm seriously gonna open up a restaurant called I don't care and on the menu is gonna be, I don't care, I don't know and just orders a side of fries for everybody because that seems to be everything that everyone eats. So we try to tune our inner critic a little bit so that we can have a better chance of making the right decisions or the right choices up front and be rewarded for it in a higher value, a higher number of them. So by periodically reflecting more, we can get through this. And this is gonna be the entropy, uh, entropy excuse me, and I, I had a previous slide in here about remembering the two E's, and sorry, I, I nixed that out. That's actually what I was doing when Keith came back and he asked if I could go instead of Andrew, so I didn't get a chance to fix this one yet. But there's two E's about this that we look at. We explore, which is gonna be something new, something exciting, something we've never done, and we also exploit what we already know. We've all gone to school. We look back at what our schooling taught us and we exploit that knowledge to try to make good decisions. But in life we have to take risk and be able to explore as well. So this is part of where we get into our entropy where we don't really know if the choices are bad. We can't really define that they're bad because a choice is just a choice is a choice with some sort of a result from it. So we're not gonna look at that aspect of it. Then we tune it. We don't use those total returns per, uh, per rewards. We use relative returns per rewards. And this is the advantage. It's why we tune the models consistently and, and constantly out there. So the actor is gonna use that advantage while the critic is gonna use the error for continuous improve improvement of always happening onto it. How many of you remember this little toy? The Tamagotchi. Yeah, we made the mistake of getting my kids two of them uh, the other Christmas. They were dead the first day. You know the whole thing on it was you're supposed to feed it, you're supposed to play with it, you're supposed to keep it alive. The thing would chirp every so often and you know once, once they got them we would hear all these chirping from everywhere in the house and I think my wife played with it more than the kids did because you just don't want to hear the noise. It was one of those toys that once the battery dies, yeah they don't get replaced. So what we want to do is we want to look at a way of, uh, there's a couple people out there in the industry that said, is there a way that we could apply the Tamagotchi model to eating handshakes and capturing handshakes? And that's where the Ponagotchi device came out of it. So the Ponagachi device is just simply a Raspberry Pi Zero and it leverages tools that we already are familiar with like BetterCap and everything where what we can do is we can capture full and half handshakes as well as capturing the PMK IDs and one of the big things about it through its reinforcement learning model is we can make friends. So there's a parasite element that is uh, applied into these when it goes and it does its, uh, does its uh, DOS if it's gonna do one of those or if just putting out its state information 
where it will see and sense everybody else in the industry, and then we're gonna look at it and we're gonna say, I'm gonna make friends with you because if I can get your brain, I have a better chance of being able to capture with greater rewards. So I've actually got three of them running. Keith has got one running up in here. Uh, Luke's turned on his in the back. I know that Troy's got one. Bryce has got one around here too as well. So we don't have to know about each other. We just become friends. And I'm out of time, but Colin's actually gonna talk about uh, this in his 10 talk about uh, related to DEF CON and some of the things that they're gonna be doing and leveraging to try to figure out is, hey, are all these people doing this and, and how do we prevent it or how do we at least mitigate some of the concerns with the handshake eating? So that's what I got, thank you. Thank you.